Next up on our lightning round sessions, um, we are going to learn about prom dress giveaway from the Groton Free Public Library in Vermont. Their population served is a thousand. So Jody, I'll just hand it over to you to introduce yourself and tell us all about what you did at your library. Great, thank you so much. So good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the conference. I know that I am surely enjoying it myself. Um, before I begin on prom dresses, please know you're only going to hear my voice in this presentation and see a title page. Um, there'll be no live webcam or PowerPoint. We have super spotty internet in general, and it's very windy here today. So my tech person has suggested I sit as still as possible and make this presentation. <laughs> to all of you. Okay. So, um, before I begin, I <laughs> wanted to tell you a little bit about our library here. Um, we are set in the northern-ish corner of the little state of Vermont. Our town has just over a thousand residents. We are home to one little store, a post office. We have a few local contractors and we have our amazing little library. Um, we're pretty isolated by most people's terms, and most of our population here lives below the national park. Our library is actually housed right in a um, development of housing for people with lower incomes. So we're pretty fortunate in that we get to serve some pretty amazing people um, with lots of needs. So um, I'm Jody, and I'm the librarian here in Groton. I'm a librarian by chance, um, and also a new resident to the town of Groton, but I'm a real big supporter of all things that help grow my small community. Um, I'm contracted to work just 22 hours here, but typically my job takes me from the early morning hours well into the night. Instorming ideas to help support people that are my patrons, but also my neighbors. Um, and so once upon a time, all of my friends were getting married. Um, my closet was packed with bridesmaids dresses of all colors and shapes and styles. Some were formal, others were shorter and a little spunkier. And as much as I really loved what each of those dresses meant to me, um, I really felt like they were taking up space in my closet and that the dresses deserved to be worn again. Um, and so really that was how the prom dress giveaway came to be. Um, though the um, girls I felt like who wouldn't otherwise be able to attend prom because a dress didn't fit into their budget or the resources to actually go and get a dress weren't available. Um, I just, I thought, why not give the dresses a second chance? So I hopped on the phone with other gals whom I'd been in the same weddings with or who I knew had been in other weddings. And I told them that I was really eager to collect up all these dresses that were sitting in our closets and give them away to girls in need. And lo and behold, everyone was absolutely thrilled with the idea. Um, not only because the dresses were gonna be worn again, but they were just taking up so much space in all of our closets. Mm -hmm. I began to contact schools and let them know I'd have dresses available. I hung flyers and made Facebook posts. I asked friends and family to spread the word. And to my surprise, but I guess really not, not really, within a few weeks I had about 50 dresses that I had to give away. At the time, I lived in New Hampshire and I wasn't a librarian yet, so um, I would use this bit of information as kind of a gateway to say that this, this project really can happen just about anywhere. Um, I set up in local gyms and thrift stores and I drove my displays around to some local schools to ensure that I was reaching the most you know, amount of girls possible. I approached thrift store owners, I approached gyms, and local stores and ask them what they could do to help them make the project most successful. I felt like I was not only filling a need in the community, but it was also a logical way to get the dresses redistributed into our community. Um, in some aspects, I feel like, kind of felt like it was a glamorous recycling project. Uh, the, re <laughs> the relationships with the thrift stores, I soon realized were extremely important. Uh, not only were they 
gateway to how to get more dresses to keep me well stocked, but they were also a great avenue um, for reaching girls to come get dresses. They helped me gather girls who weren't afraid to wear something that had once been worn before and was used. Um, their thrift stores also work as a great place for free hangers, free dress bags, and extra plastic totes, which now that I'm at the library are super important for storage at the end of the project. Also, I, one of the um, challenges of this project, but something that I'm working hard on, is getting over a stigma about wearing something that's not new. Um, in some instances, I've spoken to girls who have come to get dresses that just simply won't wear something that someone else has. And in many cases, what this does is it puts them in, in kind of a predicament that gives them two options. Either they're going to wear a dress that's been worn, or they're not going to go to the prom, uh, you know, altogether. And being that we live in a very small community, um, many girls fear that the dress that they're going to wear to the prom, everyone will know about because the person, because there's a stigma about who wore it last year and what that girl represents, and they don't want to be in the same dress as that girl last year. So one of the suggestions that I offer is that you really need to get dresses from far and wide, um, and not just in your local community. I, I contact my dad in an entire different state and friends in entire other states and ask them about if they have dresses and find ways to meet all up. And so the collection of dresses from far and wide is super important. Um, using social media seems very, very important. Um, getting the word out there and once the word is out there that you're collecting dresses and that you have an amazing program, I promise dresses will just very easily start flowing in. Starting early on this program, which is where I am at this point here in the library, means contacting your schools, um, find out when the proms are going to happen, make a calendar of the different dates, and try to promote the different proms during those different times. So here in our town where we have a union school and so I really work hard to do their prom, but there are some towns a little further away from us and I do find out when their proms are. And I do find girls do come from all over the place to get dresses. When there's truly a need, I feel like people will come, come to get them. Um, it, uh, our program also asks that, or has the, the um, idea that there are no qualifications to get a dress. So all dresses are free without any questions. Um, let's see. When people know that there's an outlet for getting rid of the dresses, in many cases, they'll jump on coming to your library to drop them off. Um, but watch what you wish for, um, because my town is so super small. I often find myself, even in the evenings, driving around doorstep to doorstep, picking up dresses that people no longer want that they would like to give to our program. I also have the problem that the dresses take up a lot of space. And so, again, watching what you wish for. If you, if you get too many, that becomes a problem, too. Um, so in the library can be challenging. Um, in the case of our library, it's super small, and I felt like this may be totally impossible. With so many dresses that are big and bulky, it's, it really is hard to find space. But when I looked around and considered a few of the pieces that I found super important about the project, I considered that we'd actually use our upstairs bathroom, which doesn't get much use. Um, it really made sense here because it was somewhat private. It wasn't in the middle of the stacks, and people would easily be able to access it even without letting me know that why they were at the library. And that was really important. Privacy reasons, and just to help kind of demote that stigma about getting these used dresses. Mm -hmm. um, I bought some racks. I, I had racks given to me from a local thrift store, and in my move, those racks didn't make the move with me, so I bought racks. Um, I got a few long mirrors, and the prom dress giveaway really began here in Groton. Um, not only did we have enough dresses to fill the racks, but I was able to hang them going up our stairwell, and the atmosphere seemed perfect. It was private, inviting, and dazzling. 
um, with all of the beautiful dresses that we had. Um, when I thought to myself kind of as a second guess about using that bathroom, I also reminded myself that I had done the same project in the corners of dusty thrift stores and sweaty gyms. And that the, our corner of the library, our little bathroom at the library would be a perfect place. I often get questions about the conditions of dresses. I've never rejected a dress because of its condition. I give the dresses away just as they are um, without the, a budget for this. There isn't money for dry cleaning, steaming, or repairing. Um, sometimes small alter alterations do need to happen. So I contact people in the area that are local seamstresses and I have the list available for those with contact information for those seamstresses. Um, in my time doing this project, there's not one time that a girl has not approached a seamstress, told them why and how they got the dress and that the seamstress did not give them their service for free. So that's pretty empowering. Mm. Um, my experience also is that I get a lot of really small dresses and mid-sized dresses, but not as many plus size dresses. So I spread the word pretty hard that I'm really in need of dresses of all sizes. Um, I wanted to share that on the first year I did this, I was contacted by a local uh, girl who was facing, her family was facing some challenging times and she needed um, a plus size dress. And at the time we really just didn't have anything in the collection that would fit her. And I, I could feel her pain as she left with nothing. Um, but it was really kind of game on for me. Um, I was absolutely determined to find a dress. So I reached back out to those who had donated and asked them to reach out to their people and really look far and wide. And I was able to contact the girl after I had gotten a bulk number of plus size dresses. And she came back and um, she was able to find a dress. And some folks who didn't have dresses offered money and with the money, I was able to get to her family and they in turn bought shoes and jewelry to, to go with the dress. And so she, she left with tears of joy that, that second time around and that was a pretty empowering um, experience. Bringing dresses to a library has been amazing and it's challenging, but it's tons of fun. The biggest challenge for this program um, at a library really is the space. Gowns take up a ton of space. Gowns need lots of room in order to be hung and seen and in their full beauty. Um, and they also, there also needs to be a good plan for storage, but really don't let those things steer you from trying to make this in, um, program work in your community. There's always a corner in every library that could use a little bling. Mm -hmm. um, and in most cases, um, this displays really don't have to be out for terribly long. I allow ours to be out for about a month to a month and a half, really just to get, you know, reach as many people as possible. But um, it, it really depends on, you know, when your problems are, if you're only going to focus on one or if there's others in the area. I also suggest really using what you have. Um, we do some streamers in our school colors. That's the buck that's up there in the corner. It's the blue and gold. Um, use some long mirrors, get some glittery fabric straps, and um, just really asking people if there's you know, if your little decoration or something that you think would make it a little better. Ask people because it's really not a commitment for, for very long if you were to borrow something. Mm -hmm. um, as a librarian, I feel like this project is another way that libraries are bridging gaps in our community. Our, our role in our library swells well beyond the stacks. Um, there's a feeling of openness, safety, and community in our library, and I feel like those who access this program feel confident about coming to the library to get a dress. There's no need for girls to have to make the choice to not attend a prom due to the lack of resources. Every girl deserves a dress and a chance to dance across the dance floor feeling beautiful and loved. If you are, if you're ready to take on such a project, I'm completely open to ask, answering questions through email or on here today. But there are also many organizations who have local chapters doing something very similar to what we have here in Groton. Mm -hmm. Find one that supports missions um, and make it a reality in your community. Or like me, take it, take it and head on and start collecting the dresses. 
um, one dress at a time, one person at a time, making a big difference. And that's our that's our prom dress giveaway here in Groton. All right, absolutely. That's that's very sounds like a great program. Um, we did have just one comment that came in that I'm going to read um, that I'm going to discuss here. Uh, Depending on your community and your state and local laws, there are sometimes issues with things that are officially donated to the public library that becomes potentially city owned property, depending on how the city is set up. So um, in certain states, I mean, this has been done in other states. She mentions in, in Indiana is a huge giveaway at a library that's very successful and yours is. So just make sure you double ch check with your um, municipality to see what the rules are when and how things can be donated, whether they can then be given to people or do they need to be circulated and checked out in that kind of way instead. Oh, great. That's a great comment. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Jody. Uh, 